Hey dear students, today the course that I will be teaching you is Social Linguistics and Psycholinguistics. Your course code is uh, ENG553. Uh, first I'll give you an introduction of myself. My name is Dr. Zahra Bukhari. I'm a double PhD from in Literature and Linguistics and Business Administration from Indiana University, Bloomington, Indiana, USA. I'm currently working at Comsats University, Islamabad campus. Now first I would like to give you an introduction of what the subject that we're going to be studying about. Now social linguistics and psycholinguistics. Various branches on the basis of the inner world of man's mind and the outer world of society and the social relationships have developed recently in modern linguistics. Now such as psycholinguistics and uh, social linguistics. Uh, today we shall study these branches in detail. First of all, I'll start with the definitions so that uh, you're clear with what we are going to be studying today. The first definition would be the basic is linguistics. Now, you need to know what linguistics is. Now, linguistics is a branch of science that studies the origin, the structure, and the use of language. Where the language started from, how do we use it in our daily life, and so on and so forth. Social linguistics now. Uh, social linguistics is the study of relationship between language and social behavior and that is called social linguistics. How we use our language in social situations. The next would be psycholinguistics. The psychological study of language is called psycholinguistics. As the name implies, psycholinguistics is principally an integration of the fields of psychology and linguistics. Now what do you mean by integration? Integration is a um, joining of the fields of psychology and linguistics. Further on, let's move on now. First of all, I'll give you the introduction to social linguistics, a basic um, that we'll be discussing the history of the subject and um, how it originated and what basically social linguistics is. Later on, then we'll move on to psycholinguistics. So, introduction to social linguistics. Social linguistics, now, uh, as I told you before, that it is the study of language in relation to society. Language is always meant for society. The social interaction and communication of ideas or messages can be possible only through language. Hum, language ke interaction sort of messages and um, through possible language ke zariye hi hum apni communication or apni ideas ek dusre ko share kar sakte hai. Uh, when we start with the history, the history and the function of language have been the subject of study since the prehistoric period. Long ago, people have been studying language from the start. But social linguistics has been introduced only recently. So social linguistics wasn't a part of language uh, in the uh, prehistoric years. Perhaps in the late 60s, uh, social linguistics was introduced. Now, considerable growth has taken place since then. Social linguistics. Now, it does not mean that the study of language in relation to society is the invention of the 1960s. When I say that it was uh, developed by that time, that doesn't mean that we started uh, learning only about language in the 60s. But it means that the contrary, that there is a long tradition of dialects. And in the general study of the relationship um, between word meaning and culture. So what the words mean. Now dialects would be the various forms of language that we use. Uh, since the 1960s, both these began to be considered as the subject within social linguistics. So after the 60s, they started considering it. Now social linguistics throws light on both the nature of language and the nature of society. So it's not only just the language, but the nature of society also. The purpose of language is to represent the nature and the culture of the society. So what do we do? We basically represent our uh, culture and society through our language.
we are known for that now we would uh, go on to see uh, social linguistics and the forms of language used in social linguistics so we use different forms of language for different purposes we express languages through either speech or graphic medium now when explaining graphic medium what do you mean graphic medium would be through drawings through written uh, anything that is uh, a written medium or a written way so either we do it through speech or through written now the speech can be a bit different from the graphic expression that is very true because now we have different ways of speaking the language and speech would be different and different than what we would uh, maybe give it in a written context the grammatical rules and the selection of appropriate words are required in graphic expression so grammatical rules are kept both important hai. to follow grammatical rules in um, your language any language that you're using and the selection of appropriate words now how do you know what are the appropriate words the appropriate words would be according to the situation or the context situation if you're in a formal situation or in an informal situation a formal situation would be either with your seniors your bosses your teachers or at a workplace and informal would be with your family your friends people that you are re more relaxed around so the grammatical rules and the selection of appropriate words are required in graphic expression but in speech some relaxation may be allowed so most of the time uh, when we are speaking um, we are not so um, correct or so sure about the gram grammatical rules that we use but in our written form it's very important if we don't write proper grammar the whole construction of the sentence would change social linguistics now social linguistics in graphic expression there are number of formal and informal forms to meet the different methods of social interaction so graphic expression like i told you would be the written form now in the written form let's say that uh, we would be we can give examples of uh, letters application report notice agenda proceedings statement newspaper books etc so how we write in books what we write in newspapers how we would be writing a letter that would have a proper format a report an application and so and so forth the speech may also have a number of forms now like graphic expression like in the written form uh, speech also has a number of forms now for example gossip now ha gossip would be like one person talking to another uh, or sharing a secret talk when we are talking to each other lecture a lecture like i'm giving you right now at the moment or a lecture in a public place when you are in a seminar lecture in a seminar or in a classroom etc that would be considered as the forms of speech now once when we uh, move on to the insights into psycholinguistics now so uh, social linguistics is the study of any and all aspects of society including cultural norms so when we go about discussing this the social linguistics is the study of any and all aspects that means that um, all the cultural uh, values expectations and context also matters and on the way language is used and the effects of language use on society so how we use the language in society and the effects that the, our language has on society social linguistics differs from sociology of language so you don't want to mix both of them social linguistics is very different from uh, sociology of language it's different by in that that the focus of social linguistics is the effect of the society on the language so in social linguistics the effect of the society on language would be social linguistics while the latter's focus is language's effect on society so the difference between social linguistics and socio sociology of language would be that um, one is 
the effect of the society on the language, social linguistics, how the society would react to our language. And uh, sociology of language would be the focus of how the language affects the society. So there are two different things and you need to differentiate between them. Further on, now social linguistics overlaps to a considerable degree with pragmatics. Pragmatic, pragmatics is also a part of linguistics. So it is historically closed, uh, closely related to linguistic anthropology and the distinction between the two fields has even been questioned recently. So uh, once we say that the, uh, it sort of overlaps means that it uh, includes pragmatics also and it is historically closely related to that means that um, previously it had uh, an um, anthropology, linguistic anthropology had an effect on uh, social linguistics and uh, sometimes people do um, make a distinction between the two fields. Now, it also studies how language varieties differ between groups separated by certain social variables. Now, that is a very important point because um, language uh, can be different in certain social sectors. Like, for example, in authenticity, um, religion, status, gender, level of education, age, etc. So, how we would explain that? A kid, a child, at a younger age, would have a, a different way of saying words or using the language. While an educated person, w uh, the level of um, language would be different for that person. Religion also makes a difference, status and gender. Now, many ways uh, how a female would use the language would be different from how uh, the male would use the language. That also counts. And how creation and adherence to these rules is used to categorize individuals in socio or socioeconomic classes. And how creation and adherence, that means like uh, how we create the language and how we would adhere to it, like to stick to it. Adher adherence means to stick to it or to uske um, saath jude rehna language ke saath. So usko hum kaise create karte hain, uske saath hum kaise jude rehte hain. And these rules is used to categorize individuals when hum unko categorize kar dete hain, divide kar dete hain. Socio or socioeconomic classes mein. Now, as the usage of language varies from place to place, dialect, dialect would be uh, variations in dialect, so um, would be the use of language. Language usage varies among social classes. And uh, in these social acts, that social linguistic studies. So once again, I'll explain that, that um, while we are, there is a variety of uh, languages used from place to place. For example, we have uh, so many languages uh, over the world. So everyone uses it in a different way. The other example could be your own country, Pakistan. Like we have so many provinces and uh, the language varies. Some words maybe uh, might be the same, but most of the time, um, most of the language is different. Now there are different sectors, let's say, for example, in Punjab, uh, there are different ways of speaking the language. Now different areas would have a different way of pronouncing the words or expressing the language. So that would be varies from place to place, uh, defining it according to social classes. Now people in villages would be speaking a language in a different way than people in the city. The pronunciation, the sound effects, the way they would use uh, the vocabulary, that would be different. So uh, social acts basically are people, variations, uh, who create variations in dialects, meaning that they make, um, they create differences in the language. The social aspects of language 
were in the modern sense first studied by Indian and Japanese linguistics um, in the 1930s. So now once we, let's uh, go back like um, we studied uh, before in the previous slides that the basic study started in 1960 but that wasn't true. So the first modern sense of learning the aspects of language started in 1930s and the Indians and the Japanese started it. And also by Gaucher in Switzerland. And Gaucher was a person uh, in the early 90s, hundreds, the 1900th century, but none received much attention in the West until much later. So even though that the Indians and Japanese studied uh, about language in 1930s, uh, and Gaucher in Switzerland studied it in uh, the early 1900s, but they didn't receive any attention they, uh, in the West. So in the West they um, were recognized or acknowledged much later, much uh, later in the years. So the study of the social motivation of language change, on the other hand, has its foundation in the wave model of the late 19th century. So the motivation of language started uh, in the late 19th century. The first attested use of the term social linguistics, the first term was by Thomas Callan Hodgson in the title of a 1939 paper. And that means that in the newspaper in 1939 when it was published, at that time uh, the term social linguistics was first used by Mr. Thomas Callan Hodgson. Social linguistics in the West first appeared in the 1960s and was pioneered by linguists such as William Lebeau in the US and Basil Bernstein in the UK. So social linguistics ka start jo usko acknowledge kiya gaya wo first time uh, 1939 ke paper mein usko wo term use kiya gaya social linguistics. Thomas Callan uh, Hodgson ne aur uske baad West mein pehli dafa um, 1960s mein uh, linguists such as William Lebeau jo US ke the aur Basil Bernstein jo UK ke rehne wale the unhone usko use kiya now what we would want to go further on is looking at the factors influencing social linguistics there are so many factors that would influence the language in society so social linguistics is a quickly developing branch of linguistics which investigates the individual and social variation of language. So social linguistics basically abhi develop ho raha hai ye branch. Linguistics ka branch hai and ye investigate wo karta jo individual person uh, ka effect hota hai language pe or jo social variation aati hai language pe. So just as regional variation of language can give a lot of information about the place the speaker is from, social variation tells about the role fulfilled by a given speaker within one community or country. How do we divide this? Regional variation, you take language in language. When you language, you can tell from your language that one person belongs from such country or such place. आप डिफरेंशिएट कर सकते हैं फर्क पता कर सकते हैं उसका उसी तरह सोशल वेरिएशन जो है दैट टेल्स अस द रोल फुलफिल्ड बाय द गिवन स्पीकर दैट मींस के उस स्पीकर के जो बोल रहा है उसके एक कम्युनिटी में या एक कंट्री में उसका सोशल स्टेटस क्या है लाइक डज ही बिलोंग फ्रॉम एन एजुकेटेड बैकग्राउंड और डज ही बिलोंग फ्रॉम अ अनएजुकेटेड बैकग्राउंड सो सोशल लिंग्विस्टिक्स इज प्रैक्टिकल a uh, scientific discipline researching the language that is actually used either by native speakers or foreigners in order to formulate theories about language change. So basically uh, social linguistics is what? It's a practical scientific discipline. A uh, scientific discipline means ke hum usko research kar rahe hai language mein ke actually usko hum use kar rahe hai native speakers, native speakers wo honge jo local local okay. like for example if uh, I belong from Pakistan I would be a native speaker of my language Urdu or if I'm a foreigner then 
my first language would be something else and my second language would be Urdu. So in order to formulate theories about language change, that means that we uh, formulate different theories of how language changes from society to society or culture to culture. Now, there are numerous factors influencing the way people speak which are investigated by social linguistics. Both are factors hai aise, jo us cheez ko influence karte hai, ya um, us pe fark dalte hai, uh, jab aap investigate karte ho social linguistics, ha, ke log bolte kaise hai, how do they speak? Now, social class is one of them. Social class would be the position of the speaker in the society. Measured by the level of education, parental background, profession, and their effect on syntax and lexis used by the speaker. Now, first of all, I'll explain what syntax is. Syntax would be the way the words are arranged in a sentence. Kya aap jumle mein lafson ko aap ek jumla banane ke liye kaise unko arrange karte? Maan pe aap kya rules apply karte hain? Ya uska structure kya hai sentence banane ka? Lexis would be the vocabulary used by the speaker. So in social class, how do you differentiate the speaker? Ko? You will differentiate them by measuring the level of education. Okay? Parental background, your parents have brought up your parents. What is background? What is your profession? Kya hai? And their effect on the way we construct a sentence and the vocabulary we use. That would be social class. Now social context, Social context would be the register of the language used depending on changing situations. Formal language and formal meetings and informal during meetings with friends, for example. Now, that we could explain very easily like I did before, that um, language can change according to situations. If I would be in a formal meeting uh, with a senior person or uh, formally giving a public speech, then my language would be very formal. In my home, with my friends and my family, my language would be informal. You also students do that. Like when you are in class or if you are going to be speaking to your teacher, the language that you would use would be, you'd keep changing variations. Like you're, uh, if you're teaching, um, learning something in class from the teacher, then uh, you would be communicating with the teacher in a formal way. But with your class fellows or your uh, fellow students, you would be speaking to them in an informal way. So that would be the social context. Context means the place or how. Now social linguistics, geographical origins. First of all, we want to see what are the geographical origins of this language. The geographical origins, how would we explain that? We would explain it by the originality. The slight differences in pronunciation between speakers that point at the geographical region which the speaker comes from. So, how we can explain that is that every language, um, let's say for example English. Now English um, spoken the same word, same vocabulary, same uh, sentence construction, but when spoken in different accents, that would be differentiating them into the graphical region. For example, when I speak, um, if my accent would be American, then somebody would be speaking in a British accent. That would be different from the American accent. Australian English, same thing, they're using the same language. It's the same English. But their pronunciation, the way they pronounce the word, would be different. So, authenticity, differences between the use of a given language by its native speakers and other authentic groups. Authenticity would be um, legally authorizing somebody um, about the differences between the use of a given language. Like we give authenticity to the language um, by the, its native speaker. So, if I am a native uh, English speaker, I can uh, definitely tell you if uh, there is any mistake in the language. And other authentic groups also who are um, used to judging and researching the language. The next would be nationality. 
Now, nationality clearly visible in the case of the English language. British English differs from American English or Canadian English. So Canadian English, like I said previously, that Canadian English, the pronunciation would be different. English um, in the British accent would be completely different. We would be pronouncing the words differently. In American English, it would be different. Now, there are many examples. When we do listen to uh, different uh, news channels, we can judge those differences. Let's say if we are going to listen to a um, channel from the US, you could differentiate the accent and that and how they pronounce the words that would be different. And let's say if we would go for BBC, then uh, the British accent would be different. So in Pakistan, basically at the moment, uh, most of you students are used to uh, learning the British English. So it's easier for you to understand that. Next would be the gender. Now, how do you think, students, that gender affects the language? Uh, differences in patterns of language used between men and women, such as quantity of speech, intonation patterns. Now, intonation patterns. What are intonation patterns? Intonation patterns are the rise and fall of voice. Aapki awaz ka utar and chadhao. Aap kaise usko deliver karte ho words ko. Phir quantity of speech, how much we speak. It's very um, a common thing, a joke usually uh, in society that usually women are considered to be um, more talkative than men. So the quantity of speech also matters. But uh, everybody has their own opinion. So um, how would the language differ in patterns between men and women? Now there are so many words, so many uh, words in vocabulary, so many ways of putting a sentence. A man could be more aggressive in saying a uh, same sentence that a woman would be more humble in. She could say it in a more um, quiet tone than maybe a man imposing some sentence. So that makes a difference so that's why gender makes a difference you can realize that in your own society also when you judge start judging people that um, the way um, a man would speak would be very different from the pattern of the way a woman would use the, use the language the next factor that uh, is important is age now the influence of age of the speaker on the use of vocabulary and grammar complexity a child, he cannot learn a grammar as soon as he gets into his first grade. So by age and time, they grow and they learn about the language. They learn more vocabulary. So the age matters a lot. A grown-up would know how to speak. The uh, vocabulary would be vast. They would have more selections of words. They would know how to use grammar properly in a sentence. But a child would not. So age really influences uh, the speaker also. So a child, you cannot expect a child to uh, say something grammatically correct when they are just learning to speak. But a grown-up, if a grown-up makes that mistake, that would be very visible. So age also has an effect on language. And all of these are a part of our society. An important factor now, influencing the way of formulating sentences is, according to social linguistics, the social class of speakers. The important factor that influences or affects the sentences formulate karne mein, banane mein, would be, in a social linguistic, uh, linguistic mutabik, social class of speakers. This is a big difference. Who social class se belong karta hai? Now, there has been a division of social classes proposed in order to make the description accurate. So, further on, I'm going to give you examples right now of um, different social classes and how it makes a difference on language. Now, two main groups of language users, mainly those performing non-manual work and those with more years of education are the middle class. 
तो पहले तो हम डिफ्रेंशिएट करते हैं सोशल क्लास को सोशल क्लास क्या है हम उसको डिवाइड करते हैं अब ऐसे लोग जो दो मेन ग्रुप्स में हम उनको डिवाइड करते हैं ऐसे लोग जो मेनली जो है नॉन मैनुअल वर्क ठीक है जो लेट से फॉर एग्जांपल टीचर्स प्रोफेसर्स ठीक है दे आर नॉट डूइंग मैनुअल वर्क मैनुअल वर्क वो होते हैं जो मेहनत अपने कर रहे हो मैनुअली ठीक है मिडिल क्लास में आते हैं वो लोग एजुकेशन उनकी एजुकेशन अगर ज्यादा होगी ठीक है अकॉर्डिंग टू द इयर्स तो दे विल बी कंसिडर्ड इन द मिडिल क्लास ना दो परफॉर्म सम काइंड ऑफ मैनुअल वर्क आर वर्किंग क्लास अब वो लोग दो क्लासेस में हमने ग्रुप में किया एक वो जो नॉन मैनुअल वर्क करते हैं जो काम नहीं करते फिजिकल एफर्ट नहीं होती मिडिल क्लास में आ गए वो लोग जो मैनुअल वर्क में आते हैं वो वर्किंग क्लास में आ गया ये आपके स्टेटस में लेट से फॉर एग्जांपल अ प्रोफेसर वुड बी लेट से ए टीचर और प्रोफेसर वुड बी फ्रॉम द मिडिल क्लास वाइल अ मजदूर अ वर्कर वुड बी फ्रॉम द वर्किंग क्लास Now they know technical for, uh, terms. They might not know things theoretically. Ab uh, theoretically matlab ki theory wise, hume padna padhana aata hai apko as uh, so we belong from the non-manual work. But uh, a worker, a construction worker, let's say, or an engineer, would be from the working class. Their way of using the language would be different. Now additional terms. Uh, would be lower and upper. So we've heard those terms before in our language that lower class and upper class. And they are frequently used in order to subdivide the social classes. Mazid unki division karne ke liye hum lower and upper class ki divisions leke aate hain. Now therefore differences between upper middle class can be compared with lower working class. So hum un cheezon ka fark देख सकते हैं जो अपर मिडिल क्लास का और लोअर वर्किंग क्लास का होगा अपर मिडिल क्लास वुड बी पीपल फ्रॉम एन एजुकेटेड बैकग्राउंड इन अ डिफरेंट सोशल स्टेटस लोअर वर्किंग क्लास वुड पीपल हु आर नॉट वेरी एजुकेटेड एंड डू मोर मैन्यूअल वर्क तो बोथ वेज द वे दे वुड यूज द लैंग्वेज वुड बी डिफरेंट So it is notable that people are acutely aware of the differences in speech pattern that mark their social class and are often able to adjust their style to the interlocutor. Now first of all you would ask me what is an interlocutor? So an interlocutor would be a person who takes part in a dialogue or a conversation. Interlocutor kon hoga? Wo person, wo insaan. जो किसी डायलॉग में या किसी कॉन्वर्सेशन में हिस्सा ले उसको हम इंटरलोक्यूटर बोलेंगे सो कई दफा बहुत ज्यादा लोग इस चीज को अवेयर होते हैं ऑफ द डिफरेंस इन स्पीच पैटर्न आप स्पीच पैटर्न वे ऑफ स्पीच डिफरेंट हो जाता है ठीक है द मार्क द वे द मार्क इन सोशल क्लास एंड आर ऑफ एन एबल टू एडजस्ट देयर स्टाइल टू द इंटरव्यूट Locutor. So, sometimes I'm, um, let's say, in a different situation. Like, uh, I, for example, would give my own ex uh, explanation. Like, if I'm uh, speaking to a servant, let's say, in my home, my way of um, pronouncing the words or the language would be uh, in a way that the person could understand me easily. If I would be speaking in a sophisticated way, the servant won't understand me. So sometimes I adjust, would adjust my language according to that. So many people do the same. You must be doing the same also, that you adjust the way or your style of speaking, and not only speaking but even writing, you would adjust it according to the person uh, who would be taking part in the conversation. Now it is especially true for the members. of the middle class who seem eager to use forms associated with upper class however in such efforts the forms of characteristic of upper class are often overused by middle class members so ye cheez zyada kahan pe hum log dekhte hain kahan pe hame nazar aata hai jab members of the middle class wo uh, upper class ke sath associate hona chahenge so they would try to use the language or the words that the upper class uses Now, but however, 
like efforts of the for, uh, forms of characteristic of upper class are often overused. So sometimes uh, upper class to words use karenge ya koi terms use karenge. Wo kyunke middle class wo used to nahi hai us language ko us form mein use karne ke. Jaise upper class hai. So wo sometimes un words ko overuse kar denge. Yani zyada repeat karenge. So the above mentioned process of adopting own speech to reduce social distance is called convergence. Now, once again, you would ask what convergence is. So convergence would be when two things meet at a certain point. The two things at a certain point pe aake milti hain ya judti hain. Wo usko hum convergence bolenge. So the above mentioned process of adopting own speech to reduce social distance is called convergence. So we have read in the previous slide that the middle class wale upper class ki language use karte just to reduce the distance. Social distance aapka kisi ke saath hoga, aap usko reduce karna chahenge ya aap chahenge ke wo dono cheeze a certain point pe aake mile matlab ke aapka converge ho jayen so you would adopt a separate way of pronouncing the words or the language. So when people want to emphasize the social distance, they make use of this process called divergence, purposefully using idiosyncratic forms. Now idiosyncratic, once again, I'll explain that to you. Idiosyncratic would be to act in a particular way. Kuch khas tarike se act karna, ya react karna. Divergence kya hoga? Divergence would be um, to go um, the way different ways, go in different ways. It would be the opposite of convergence. Convergence wo hoga jaha pe aap ek point pe aake um, meet kar rahe honge certain point pe to let's say um, interact karne mein aapko taake easy ho logon ke saath social class mein. Divergence uh, in the fall, log emphasize kar dete in social class ko is liye ke they want to emphasize ke hum is class se nahi, is class se belong karte hain. So maybe let's say that an um, owner would speak differently to his servant uh, in a, just to emphasize that he belongs from a different social class. And that would be called divergence. Social linguistics. And now, social linguistics investigates the way in which language changes depending on the region of country it is used in. Now, like I told you before, that um, in your own country, let's say in Pakistan, for example, there are so many ways, like Urdu is your national language, so um, many people would speak Urdu in a different way. The pronunciation or the vocabulary would maybe be different. So, social linguistics basically kya kar raha hai? Wo investigate kar raha hai. Yehi language change, jo ek hi region mein, ya different regions mein, country mein, use ki jati hai, ek hi language mein. Now, to describe a variety of language that differs in grammar, lexis, and pronunciation. From others, a term dialect is used. So, hum apne language ko differ karte hain, grammatical way se, grammar changes se, lexis, humari vocabulary se, and pronunciation. Or pronunciation se hum, dusro se, dialect se, variation of language se, different ho jate hain. Now, each member of community has a unique way of speaking due to the life experience, the education, age, and aspiration. An individual person, uh, personal variation of language used is called an idiolect. Ab idiolect usko bolenge hum kis chiz ka? Jo variation in san uh, leke aata hai language ke andar. That person would be called an idiolect. Now each member of community has a unique way of speaking. Ab obviously we see a day to day in our daily life, in our daily life experience. Each member of community has a unique way of speaking due to the life experience, education, age, and aspiration. An individual personal variation of language use is called an idiolect. 
सो एक पर्सनल यूज में जब एक पर्सन वेरिएशन लेके आता है लैंग्वेज में उसको हम इडियोलैक्ट बोलेंगे सो ईच मेंबर वुड हैव अ डिफरेंट वे ऑफ स्पीकिंग हम अपने लाइफ एक्सपीरियंस से सीखते हैं हम अपने लाइफ एक्सपीरियंस से अपनी लैंग्वेज यूसेज को डिफर uh, करते हैं या चेंज करते हैं एजुकेशन से फर्क पड़ता है हमारी लैंग्वेज पे किस तरीके से हम बोल रहे हैं सोसाइटी एजुकेशन से बहुत मैटर करती है एज एज फैक्टर भी है क्रोनअप्स एंड चिल्ड्रन बड़े और छोटों का लैंग्वेज का यूसेज वो भी डिफरेंट है सो ऑल ऑफ दोज थिंग्स मेक अ डिफरेंस इन सोशल लिंग्विस्टिक्स एंड दैट्स वट सोशल लिंग्विस्टिक्स बेसिकली इन्वेस्टिगेट्स now there are a number of numerous factors number of factors influencing a dialect some of which have been discussed just now now yet two more need to be elucidated namely jargon and slang bahut sare aise factors hain jo humne discuss kiye hain jo influence karte hain ya asar jinka hota hai dialect pe unme se kuch hum discuss kar chuke hain aur ab hum do main cheez pe point pe zyada एम्फोसाइज करना चाहेंगे या आपको एक्सप्लेन करना चाहेंगे लूसीडेटेड मीन्स टू एक्सप्लेन समथिंग किसी चीज को एक्सप्लेन करना मेनली नाउ फर्स्ट थिंग वुड बी जॉर्गन एंड देन स्लैंग जॉर्गन क्या है ना जॉर्गन इज स्पेसिफिक टेक्निकल वोकेबलरी एसोसिएटेड विद द पर्टिकुलर फील्ड ऑफ इंटरेस्ट और टॉपिक फॉर एग्जाम्पल वर्ड सच एज कन्वर्जेंस डायलैक्ट and social class or social linguistic jargon ab jargon basically wo words hain jo technical vocabulary hoti hai every person does not use jargons in their daily life they uh, some technical people would like an engineer would have their own language their own vocabulary their own words uh, a doctor would have their own jargons their own vocabulary kuch aise words hain jo sirf specifically उन टेक्निकल डिफरेंट टेक्निकल फील्ड से या डिफरेंट टेक्निकल टॉपिक से रिलेटेड ही यूज किए जाते हैं फॉर एग्जाम्पल अब मैंने आपको दिया कि कन्वर्जेंस जो वर्ड हमने पढ़ा ठीक है कन्वर्जेंस और डायलैक्ट का वर्ड सोशल क्लास का वर्ड ये सारे सोशल लिंग्विस्टिक्स के जार्गन हैं सिर्फ सोशल लिंग्विस्टिक्स में ही यूज होते हैं डॉक्टर्स की जो टर्मिनोलॉजी होगी वो सिर्फ डॉक्टर्स ही यूज करेंगे इंजीनियर्स की सिर्फ इंजीनियर और कॉमन पर्सन जो आम इंसान है दे के नॉट अंडरस्टैंड जॉर्गन सो द नेक्स्ट वुड बी स्लैंग स्लैंग अब क्या है स्लैंग इज अ टाइप ऑफ लैंग्वेज यूज मोस्ट फ्रीक्वेंटली बाई पीपल फ्रॉम आउटसाइड ऑफ हाई स्टेटस ग्रुप्स कैरेक्टराइज बाई द यूज ऑफ अनयूजल वर्ड्स एंड फ्रेजेस इंस्टेड ऑफ कन्वेंशनल फॉर्म्स सो स्लैंग वो चीज आ जाती है जब uh, हम वर्ड्स को शॉर्ट बोलेंगे लेट्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल हमारे बहुत सारे ऐसे वर्ड्स हैं लेट्स से लाइक इन अमेरिकन इंग्लिश देर इज अ वेरी स्पेसिफिक वर्ड वन यू वॉन्ट टू से समथिंग इज वेरी गुड वी यूज द वर्ड दैट इट्स वेरी कूल ओ कूल दैट्स नाइस दैट वुड बी अ स्लाइंग नाउ इन द बेसिक इंग्लिश वकैबलरी कूल वुड मीन कोल्ड ठंडा बट स्लाइंग में दैट मीन्स के इट्स वेरी गुड कूल का मतलब आया वेरी गुड इसी तरह बहुत सारे स्लैंग्स डेवलप होते हैं जब लोग आउटसाइड ऑफ हाई स्टेटस ग्रुप्स उनसे हट के ये लोग जो है बहुत हाई स्टेटस ग्रुप्स होंगे दे विल एजुकेटेड ग्रुप्स लाइक लेट्स से स्कॉलर्स और प्रोफेसर्स दे वुडेंट यूज स्लैंग इन देयर लैंग्वेज बट अ कॉमन पर्सन वुड यूज स्लैंग इजिली सो द सेम थिंग लाइक इन इंग्लिश सो देर मस्ट बी स्लैंग्स इन उर्दू ऑल्सो सो वो कन्वेंशनल फॉर्म्स जो एक आपके कन्वेंशनल फॉर्म है जो आपको एक सेट दे दिया गया है वर्ड्स वोकेबलरी द वे यू आर गोइंग टू यूज द लैंग्वेज उससे हट के जो यूज होगा जो आप अपने वर्ड्स बनाते हैं दोज वुड बी कॉल्ड स्लैंग सोशल लिंग्विस्टिक्स ना सोशल लिंग्विस्टिक्स इज अ ब्रांच ऑफ लिंग्विस्टिक्स विच स्टडीज द रिलेशन बिटवीन लैंग्वेज एंड सोसाइटी सो समराइज हम करते हैं इसको सोशल लिंग्विस्टिक्स को द इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ इट दैट बेसिकली कमिंग बैक अगेन टू द सेम टॉपिक दैट इट्स अ रिलेशन बिटवीन लैंग्वेज एंड सोसाइटी सोशल लिंग्विस्टिक्स स्टडी करता है क्या चीज रिलेशन जो है लैंग्वेज एंड सोसाइटी का ताल्लुक 
लैंग्वेज का सोसाइटी में कैसे इंटरेक्ट होकर ताल्लुक बनता है ना लैंग्वेज चेंजेस इट्स फॉर्म एंड स्ट्रक्चर ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ सोशल कंडीशन लैंग्वेज जो है अपना फॉर्म और अपना स्ट्रक्चर चेंज करता है सोशल कंडीशन के ऊपर यानी जो भी आपकी सोशल सिचुएशन होगी उसकी बेसिस के ऊपर आपके लैंग्वेज में चेंज आएगा या आपके स्ट्रक्चर में ना फॉर एग्जाम्पल सोशल क्लास जेंडर रिलीजन एंड कल्चर ग्रुप्स सो वंस अगेन वी वुड बी रिपीटिंग द समराइजिंग द सेम थिंग दैट सोशल क्लास से फर्क पड़ता है आपके लैंग्वेज पर जेंडर से फर्क पड़ता है आपके रिलीजन से फर्क पड़ता है एंड कल्चरल ग्रुप से ना रिलीजन से आई वुड गिव यू एन एग्जाम्पल ऑफ लैंग्वेज लेट से इवन जस्ट ऑफ सेन how you would introduce yourself now in our uh, language that uh, we go back uh, to saying that language changes its form and structure on the basis of social conditions now for example social class gender religion and culture groups now, how would religion affect our language we can take that example from even people saying um assalamu alaikum that would be how to greet the muslims would be greeting the indians would have a different way of saying maybe namaste so these words are different and uh, these are the structure we according to change ourselves in social conditions so if somebody uh, would be coming to a muslim country for example to pakistan if the official way to greet somebody would be uh, according to saying assalamu alaikum then we would use that language there we go to the us we would say hello so we go to india we would use their language so according to social conditions we change the form and the structure of language a particular social group may speak a different variety of a language from the rest of the community so maybe koi ek particular as a group hai ya some people who would speak language in a different way from the rest of the community such a group of speakers comes under the head of speech community speech community aapki change ho jati hai for example let's say uh, there is one group in a <clears throat> country or in a community that uh, would speak very pure uh, english or pure language of uh, english and in that group there would be uh, a particular social group let's say we would use as a working class they might use slang in their language so an educated person would try to avoid using slang in formal conversation but an uneducated person or a person of a working class who doesn't realize the differences of how to use language would maybe uh, use more slang in his language and they would be differentiated and divided into speech community now the variation in language as such may occur due to differences in social class or status so aapke variation of language kab aati hai wo jab aayegi jab aapke class aur ya status mein fark hoga the speakers belonging to the educated and higher class may have a different way of speaking of the same language in comparison with that of those belonging to an uneducated and lower class once again this is a repetition of the same thing that um, educated people would use language in a different way than an uneducated person would use now a language also varies among the speakers belonging to different geographical regions with respect to their pronunciations like i explained before that um, in your language urdu in pakistan maybe the speakers are belonging from different geographical regions let's say from punjab or from balochistan now the people in balochistan would be maybe speaking urdu in a different pronunciation they would speak the same language you see but it would be with a different pronunciation and the people in punjab would speak urdu in a different way so now same thing would count for the west in english also the english spoken in london varies from which that uh, which is spoken in the other regions of the same country so british english may be differences hain the people speaking jo london city mein rehte hain uh, unka bolne ka english ka andaaz different hoga bajaye un logon ke jo aas paas ke regions mein rehte hain 
ठीक है लंदन से आप बाहर चले जाओ आपको एकदम से विजिबल डिफरेंस नजर आएगा लैंग्वेज का बोल वही इंग्लिश रहे हैं लेकिन इन अ डिफरेंट प्रोनाउंसिएशन समटाइम्स इवन डिफरेंट वोकेबलरी बट ज्यादातर वोकेबलरी सेम होती है प्रोनाउंसिएशन या एक्सेंट चेंज हो जाता है और एक्सेंट चेंज से आपको फिर अंडरस्टैंडिंग में लैंग्वेज के डिफिकल्ट होती है सो हम यही कहेंगे कि लैंग्वेज वेरीज इन डिफरेंट वेज अमंग स्पीकर बोलने वालों से वेरी करती है ना फॉर एग्जाम्पल रिसीव प्रोनाउंसिएशन द वर्ड रिसीव प्रोनाउंसिएशन आर पी इज अ वराइटी ऑफ स्पोकन इंग्लिश यूज इन द साउथ वेस्ट ऑफ इंग्लैंड एंड इज पर्टिकुलरली एसोसिएटेड विद द यूनिवर्सिटीज ऑफ ऑक्सफर्ड एंड केम्ब्रिज एंड द बी बी सी अब जैसे मैंने आपको पहले भी एक्सप्लेन किया कि इंग्लिश लैंग्वेज भी बहुत वराइटी में बोली जा सकती है ठीक है द वर्ड्स द लैंग्वेज वुड बी द सेम रिटर्न फॉर्म में इट वुड बी द सेम बट इन स्पीकिंग इन स्पीच देर वुड बी ए वराइटी इन इट सो साउथ वेस्ट ऑफ इंग्लैंड के पार्ट में आप देखेंगे कि स्पोकन इंग्लिश वहां पे डिफरेंटली वहां पे रिसीव प्रोनाउंसिएशन ये एक वराइटी है वहां की लैंग्वेज की जो पर्टिकुलरली खास तौर पे सिर्फ उन जगहों से एसोसिएट करती है जैसे फॉर एग्जांपल ऑक्सफोर्ड यूनिवर्सिटी में बोले जाने से खेमरिज में जैसे बोलते हैं या बीबीसी पे जिस तरह बोलेंगे दैट वुड बी वेरी डिफरेंट फ्रॉम द पीपल लोकल पीपल लिव इन इन डिफरेंट रीजन और वो कैसे बोल रहे होंगे इट इज एन एजुकेटेड एंड फॉर्मल काइंड ऑफ इंग्लिश अब रिसीव प्रोनाउंसिएशन जो है वो एजुकेटेड और फॉर्मल काइंड है formal way of speaking english whereas the english spoken in the north of england for example in yorkshire and lancashire in scotland and wales differ in their form and pronunciation so english same hai theek hai sirf lekin pronunciation ya bole jane ka tarika different hai so jo hum south west of england mein let's say um, english ke words use karenge ya pronounce karenge jis tarah um, same thing wo north england mein wo different ho jayega साउथ एंड नॉर्थ का डिफरेंस आ जाएगा सो इन यॉर्कशायर लैंगशायर जो उनकी सीरीज है स्कॉटलैंड या वेल्स में वहां पे फॉर्म या प्रोनाउंसिएशन ऑफ द लैंग्वेज इंग्लिश लैंग्वेज वो चेंज हो जाती है सो सिमिलरली वराइटीज ऑफ इंग्लिश स्पोकन इन डिफरेंट कंट्रीज फॉर एग्जाम्पल अमेरिकन इंडियन एंड ऑस्ट्रेलियन इंग्लिश ऑल्सो हैव वेरिएशन once again american english is very different from the british english or from the australian english not different in the writing method or the vocabulary or the words or the sentence structure syntax but different in the speech aapki pronunciation the way you would pronounce a word that would be different so australians would pronounce a word in a very difficult or different way uh, me be an american i can't understand australian english just because of that because of their change in pronunciation so it has a variation in it so english spoken in different countries would have in india the way they speak english would be india or pakistan the language would be different हम जिस तरह इंग्लिश बोलेंगे इंडिया या पाकिस्तान में रहते हुए या यहाँ के लोकल लोग वुड बी डिफरेंट फ्रॉम नेटिव अमेरिकन और ब्रिटिश और ऑस्ट्रेलियन सोशल लिंग्विस्टिक स्टडीज दीज वेरिएशन एंड चेंजेस इन अ लैंग्वेज अब सोशल लिंग्विस्टिक्स क्या करता है यही वेरिएशन और यही चेंजेस जो है लैंग्वेज में उसको स्टडी करता है बेसिकली सो दैट इज ऑल अबाउट सोशल लिंग्विस्टिक्स briefly we will be studying further about social linguistics in our coming further lectures but today i what i wanted to do was just give you an introduction of the both uh, the topics because we our course is a combined course of social linguistics and psycholinguistics so we wanted to go with an introduction of both of those so we would end social linguistics at this point and i would start explaining psycholinguistics now what is psycholinguistics we will study each of these in detail further on with our lectures so now the second part of this subject is psycholinguistics now i want to give you an introduction to psycholinguistics first explaining what it is i hope you understood what social linguistics was so there is a huge difference between social and psycho 
Now, psycholinguistics is the study of psychological processes involved in the language. ये psychological process से involved है, वो society से involved था social linguistics और psycholinguistics आपके psychological processes, the mind, the way the mind works. Now, psycholinguists study understanding, producing and remembering language and hence are concerned with listening, reading, speaking, writing and memory of language. Psycholinguistics would be a little different from uh, social by because this is how we understand the language. That was how we speak it according to society and this is how we would study understanding the language or producing the language, how we produce it. Remembering the language also, koi language aap, usko aap, for example English jo hai, that is a new language to you. So how you would be remembering this language or how you would be understanding it or how you would produce it in forms of sentences or words. And hence are concerned with listening, reading, speaking and writing. So it is uh, concerned with all four forms of the language. Every language would have a listening part, a reading, a speaking and a writing. And memory of language and how well we memorize it. They are also interested in how we acquire language and the way in which it interacts with other psychological systems. So, it's also interested in a study about how we acquire. Acquire means how we get the language or how we obtain the language and how uh, in which way it interacts with other psychological systems or our other psychological systems ke saath ye interact karta hai. Now many people think that psycholinguistics has a rather dated field emphasizing the role of linguistics too much. Kain logon ka ye thought hai ke psycholinguistics is um, dated field that means like it's very old and it emphasizes more uh, the part of linguistics in it. So although the area might once have been about the psychology of linguistic theory it is now much more. In a time, as a psycholinguistics of uh, linguistic theory ki psychology thi. But ab it has increased and it's much more. So still there is currently no better term, so it will have to do. So there currently we have no other word to use for it. So we would say, uh, so instead of saying psychology of linguistic theory, then we would just call it psycholinguistics. Now, psycholinguistics or psychology of language is the study of psychological and neurobiological factors that enable humans to acquire, use, comprehend and produce language. Psycholinguistics kya hai? Psycholinguistics basically uh, wo study hai jo neurobiological factors would be uh, the using your brain and your body. Psychological factors, take it mentally, and you are neurobiological by using your brain and your body that enable humans to acquire. Acquire means to obtain, ya hasil karna, the use and comprehend and produce language. So, usko language ko kaise use karna hai, kaise usko understand karna, comprehend karna, and kaise usko produce karna hai. Yani uske bolne ka tarika, ya likhne ka tarika. So modern research makes use of biology, neuroscience, cognitive science, linguistics and information theory to study how the brain processes language. So uh, modern research, hum dekh rahe hai, modern research to describe how the brain language ko kaise process karta hai, kaise samajta, kaise usko uh, distribute karta hai understanding mein. Us mein hum Different biology bhi shamil ho jati, neuroscience hai, cognitive science hai, linguistics hai, information theory, ye sari cheezen usme include hoti hai. Now psycholinguistic covers the cognitive process that um, make it possible to generate a grammatical and meaningful sentence out of vocabulary and grammatical structure as well as the process that makes it possible to understand utterances, words, texts, etc. So psycholinguistics kun chizong ko us process ko cover karti hai jo us chiz ko possible karti hai ke hum grammatical or ek proper grammar ke saath or 
کوئی پروپر مطلب والا سینٹنس بنائیں وکیبلری کو یوز کر کے اور گرامیٹیکل سٹرکچر کو یوز کر کے یعنی ہم صرف اگر ورڈز جوڑ دیں تو that would be not enough for making language so psycholinguistics would study that that how we would use the vocabulary or the words putting them into a grammatical uh, structure and giving them a form of a sentence Where, um, as well as the process that makes it possible to understand utterances utterances kya hoti hain utterances is when aap kuch bol rahe hote when you're saying something so words or text تو ٹیکسٹ آپ کا ریٹن فارم میں آگیا ورڈز آگے یہ آپ کے اٹرنسز جو آپ نے لفظ بولے ان کو جو ہے انڈرسٹینڈ کرنے میں حلق کرتا ہے ناو ڈیویلپمنٹل سائک لنگویسٹک سٹڈیز چلڈرنز ابیلیٹی ٹو لرن لائنگویج اسی میں ایک پارٹ آ جاتا ہے سائکو لنگویسٹک میں ڈیویلپمنٹل سائکو لنگویسٹک that would be specifically just to study how children's uh, ability or their ability to learn the language ایک لینگویج سیکھنے کے لیے ایک بچہ کیا اس کے اندر کیا ابیلیٹیز ہوں گی ناو سائیکو لینگویسٹکس is a branch of study which combines the disciplines of psychology and linguistics it is concerned with the relationship between the human mind and the language examines the processes that occurs in the brain while producing and perceiving both written and spoken discourse سائیکو لنگویسٹکس وہ برانچ ہے سٹڈی کی which would combine the disciplines یعنی دو disciplines کو combine کر رہا ہے سائیکولوجی کو اور لنگویسٹکس کو now it is concerned with the relationship between the human mind وہ relationship پہ discuss کر رہا ہے between a human mind and the language and examines the process that occurs in the brain اور اس process کو examine کرتا ہے جو انسان کے دماغ میں چل رہا ہوتا ہے when you're speaking a language or using a language the process of producing that or perceiving it yani ya to aap produce kar rahe ho you're speaking that language or you're perceiving it yani you're understanding it aap samajh rahe ho koi aur bol raha hai aur aap samajh rahe hain both written and spoken discourse mein yani written form mein bhi and spoken form mein bhi it is interested in the ways of storing lexical items and syntactic rules in the mind as well as the processes of memory involved in perception and interpretation of tasks so um, basically lexical aapke jo hai uh, usko bhi count karta now what is uh, lexical would be your vocabulary syntactic syntactic would be the structure of word so sin, uh, structure of ورڈ کے رولز کو جو ہے نا مائنڈ میں رکھتے ہوئے کہ آپ نے کس طریقے سے ورڈ کو سٹرکچر دینا ہے کون سی وکیبلری آئٹمز کو سٹور آپ کیسے کر رہے ہیں اپنے مائنڈ میں ایز ویل ایز دا پروسیس آف میموری انوالو ان پرسیپشن اینڈ انٹرپریٹیشن آف ٹیسک اور وہ چیز انوالو کرتی ہے جو آپ کے میموری تھا کہ آپ جب انڈرسٹینڈ کرتے ہیں یا کسی چیز کو انٹرپریٹ کرتے ہیں ٹیکس کو سو ہاؤ وڈ دیٹ بی the process of speaking and listening are analyzed so psycholinguistics mein make or cheez mein kya dekhte hain ke the speaking and listening is analyzed along with the language acquisition and the language uh, disorders so language uh, disorders basically the process of speaking and listening ko hum analyze karenge acquisition acquisition kya cheez hai now acquisition means to acquire or to obtain hasil karna theek hai the process of speaking and listening hum usko language ko kaise hasil karte hain acquire karte hain and the language disorders now psycholinguistics as a separate branch of study emerged in the late 1950s psycholinguistics separately kab study hona shuru hua 1950s mein usko separate ek branch bana di gayi linguistics ki and the 1960s as a result of Chomsky revolution now Noam Chomsky is a famous linguist um, I would like you students to study about him please uh, check uh, the details and the history about him and then you would learn a lot we will be teaching you also about it so in the late 50s and 60s uh, Chomsky revolution Chomsky ne jo revolution leke aaya usme psycholinguistics ko humne separate branch bana diya linguistics ka the ideas presented by chomsky became so important that they quickly gained a lot of publicity and had a big impact on large number of contemporary views of language 
इनी चॉम्स्की ने जो अपने आइडियाज प्रेजेंट किए इन द लेट 1950s एंड 60s uh, उस वक्त उसको बहुत ज्यादा पब्लिसिटी मिली पीपल लिसन टू हिम एंड दे हैड अ बिग इंपैक्ट ऑन अ लार्ज नंबर ऑफ पीपल सो बहुत सारे ऐसे कंटेम्प्रेरी व्यूज या ऐसी uh, चीजें थी जिस पे जो है ना ये आइडियाज उसके जब उसने प्रेजेंट किए उन पर बहुत असर हुआ सो कॉन्सिक्वेंटली also psycholinguistics started investigating such matters as the processing of deep and surface structure of sentences so uske nateeje mein psycholinguistics ne jo investigate karna shuru kiya process of deep and surface structure of sentences structure of sentence and the deepness of it so in the early years of the development of psycholinguistics special experiments were designed in order to examine if the focus of processing is the deep syntactic structure ab early years mein jo hai jab psycholinguistics develop ho raha tha at that time syntactic structure once again i'll tell you the structure of word uh bahut sare experiments special experiments were designed to examine the focus of processing is in um, of the structure of the word स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ वर्ड कैसे प्रोसेस होता है ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन ऑफ सेंटेंसेस इट वॉज इनिशियली डिस्कवर्ड दैट द ईज ऑफ प्रोसेसिंग वॉज कनेक्टेड विथ सिंटेक्टिक कम्प्लेक्सिटी हाउ एवर लेटर ऑन इट बिकेम क्लियर दैट नॉट ओनली सिंटेक्टिक कम्प्लेक्सिटी एड्स टू अ डिफिकल्टी ऑफ प्रोसेसिंग बट ऑल्सो सोमैंटिक फैक्टर्स हैव अ स्ट्रॉन्ग इन्फ्लुएंस ऑन इट सो सोमैंटिक फैक्टर्स वुड बी द स्टडी ऑफ मीनिंग सोमैंटिक फैक्टर्स हम जो मीनिंग्स को सीखना होता है उसको वी वुड कॉल इट द स्टडी ऑफ मीनिंग सो लेटर ऑन द ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन ऑफ सेंटेंसेज वॉज इनिशली डिस्कवर्ड तो उन्होंने डिस्कवर किया दैट द ईज ऑफ प्रोसेसिंग वॉज कनेक्टेड विद द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ द वर्ड एंड हाउ दे यूज द मीनिंग ऑफ दोज वर्ड्स एंड हाउ स्ट्रॉन्ग इन्फ्लुएंस एट हार्ट so students for today i think uh, we've studied a lot we still have a, a lot to study about psycholinguistics the introduction of psycholinguistics will be followed in the next lecture and i will uh, have a continuation of this same and then we would separately study both the different aspects so in the first lecture we were studying both of them together as an introduction later on we would be studying them separately so if uh, i hope it was understandable for you and uh, in the next lecture inshallah we will continue about psycholinguistics thank you take care and goodbye